Hello boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the My Player Career Mode. Couple of things to show you before we get ourselves into some action. The draw has been made for the next round of the Europa League. Unfortunately, as you guys know from the previous episode, we were injured, so I didn't actually feature against Fiorentina. But the draw has gone through after we did beat them over the two legs, and we have drawn Dortmund in the quarterfinals. Some really tough teams still left in this competition as well, so, you know, this is only the first hurdle that we'll have to get over. On top of that, we also won ourselves the Carabao Cup last episode. Again, was injured, so I didn't actually get to play the games. So that was kind of annoying, but it's real whatever. Regardless of that, you know, the focus wasn't the Carabao Cup this year. The focus, of course, is the Premier League title. And it sits like this after 29 league games. Five points clear of Manchester United. Nine games to go. And I know I've been, you know, mentioning this a lot in the past few episodes, but that record of Mohamed Salah, we're hunting it down. We need another 12 goals to beat it. And we've got nine games to do it in. Starting with this game right here today against FC Bournemouth, who are currently seventh in the Premier League. So this by no means will be easy. Sit back, relax, get yourself a drink and a snack, come back and get ready to watch us try and grab some goals in order to try and break this record. First game of the episode, without further ado, is upon us. Actually, there is one thing I want to do, and that is change my celebration first. And then we'll jump ourselves into the game. Whilst I was at it, I also went ahead and changed around the boots as well as a celebration. That's the side for this first game. It's a strong one and it's one that should create chances. But Bournemouth high flying in the league, as I said, won't be easy by any means. Let's find out how game one goes today. And I think we need a good start. That is the big thing I've got to get used to. I've got to start quick. We've got to try and get on the score sheet early doors. So, you know, it's a long way to go. 12 goals, nine games. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's over, a, well, we probably need to score. If we can score a hat-trick and then two goals in one game, and then obviously a goal a game after that. But the likelihood is, are we going to be able to score a hat-trick and then two goals? I don't know. So, yeah, intriguing. That is the Bournemouth lineup then, as you see on your screen. Not too bad. Dale Fry, John Lukaku, I've seen I've seen it before anyway, actually. And David Brooks as well, just in behind the striker. Um, not too bad. So, like I said, tough test this one, but we are underway for it. And whenever we get a chance, you guys will be noted. So hopefully 20, 30 minutes of action coming your way today. Oh, well, Iwobi sent it in and I tried very quickly to get it off to Ndidi. Iwobi, central, finds four now. No, he comes all the way through to us and we've got ourselves the goal. Mistake made by Bournemouth and you cannot make it in this sort of game. In these type of games, you have to be clinical. You've got to get the ball out. They made so many mistakes in the build up to that. And we took the lead after only 14 minutes. I thought Fornals was going to finish it off when the ball came across, but he left it to me instead. I did ask for the pass, to be fair. Iwobi just lays it on the plate, and I thought there Fornals was going to take it, but he jumped over the ball. He obviously heard our shout and decided that we were the best cause of action. We nearly fell over in the process. <laughs> Maybe Fornals should have taken that. I know I gave him the shout, but take over and just smash it home. I'm not going to complain, though, because that means now we need 11 more goals. And after 15 minutes, we're already off the mark, which is a phenomenal start to the game. Can Bournemouth find a quick reply, though? Jordan Lukaku's ball in towards the box. Leno comes out and catches. Brooks through towards Callum Wilson. Wilson on the ball. I'm surprised he's still at Bournemouth, actually. We're quite a way into the future here. So he's still, uh, he's still doing bits for Bournemouth in the Premier League, which is still surprising. Kimmich sent it down the line. There we go. Got the run on the defender now as well. Not a lot going on in the middle of the box, though, as we steam forward, using the pace to our advantage. Across it goes, in towards the middle, just too high for Pablo Fornals, and I puts it out of play. Steamed in there, but there wasn't a lot going on as soon as we got into the box. Ben Sabani's ball, Fornals, what a header! What a header from Pablo Fornals. 2-0 Arsenal. No way did I expect to see this go in the back of the net. Ben Sabani's cross, in towards the box. Fornals just in a little bit of space. Got up well, but the power he generates behind that ball is tremendous. To beat the goalkeeper from here, it has to be a good header. Now, the only thing I can say is the keeper in the build-up to this was actually looking into the box to see what was going on. And he took his eye slightly off of Pablo Fornals, which maybe gave him the upper edge there. But take nothing away from that header, because that was brilliant. Jordan Ive from Brooks. Ive trying to make something for Bournemouth. Good delivery, and that's a good header. Leno has to push it out. Bournemouth with a sign of life. Brilliant ball in from Ive towards the back post. And Rog got his header on target. But Leno was equal to it. Very quick to react. You know what? That might have even come back off the post there. You can see it did have curl on it. It might have curled onto the post. But it could take no chances, Bird Leno. Had to try and make it as Dale Fry. Little bit of space in the box for him to be able to volley one goalwards. Not enough behind it. Easy for Leno. But a couple of chances there for Bournemouth. Can't write them out just yet. 
Well, shot is off. I think uh, Zivkovic has come on in his place. But at the minute, it's still very much Arsenal looking for this third goal. Obviously, Bournemouth have had a couple of moments. Four nails again from the edge of the area. Another brilliant header. The guy has just pulled him out of nowhere. What is this from Pablo Fornals? I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, the headed goal from Fornals, it's been unbelievable. He got one last episode. He's got two today. And they've both been from near the edge of the area. Awobi's delivery again. Look at this. I know he's got space and time to think about it. But still, again, in terms of a header, that's right out of the top draw. Another sensational moment from Pablo Fornals. Arsenal 3, Bournemouth 0. A brace for the centre attacking midfielder. I wonder what his heading stat is, actually. I'm going to check it after this game, because two in a game is actually brilliant. Smith driving forward for Bournemouth. Lukaku gets one back for this uh, wayside. And it's another headed goal as well. We're seeing a lot of headers today. Jordan Lukaku, the latest of them. It's Arsenal 3, Bournemouth 1. Is that their way back into this game, though? That is the question mark. Good work from, I think it's Smith down the right-hand side. Gets the delivery in. There's a lot of bodies back for Arsenal, but none of them could get near it. Lukaku... Keeps his composure and calmness and sends the header past Leno. Game on. 3-1. 23 minutes to go. Wobi 4-1 Arsenal. Soon as the goal goes in for Bournemouth, we create another chance. And Alex Awobi smashes it into the top corner. Well, I said game on. I think it's back off again because it's now 4-1 to the home side. Alex Awobi with the latest of the four. And like I said, the good work in the build-up to this goal is where it all lies. Zivkovic lays it off. Awobi just gets the shot away. And it's rising into that top corner. Zivkovic steals it back. Looks to send us through. We've got the touch just ahead of the defender. Awobi then he's away. 1-2 very quickly with him. I don't know why he's giving the ball back. Look how wide he centers as well. Got to try and cut it back on the left foot and put the cross in. There is the delivery. Amiri goes up. And it's another headed goal. <laughs> Arsenal 5. Bournemouth 1. Three headed goals from Arsenal today, including the fourth from Lukaku for Bournemouth. Unbelievable headers going on here. I genuinely do not even know where this is coming from. Usually headers, we don't seem to score that many. There is the delivery straight in. Amiri then this time it is. Flicks it on and it's in off the post. Sensational headers all around today. 5-1. And there goes the first full-time whistle of today's video. A 5-1 thumping in the end of Bournemouth. I expected a very tough challenge here, but in the end, it was pretty routine. You've got to say, though, the headers on show today were just tremendous. We scored the opening goal of the episode, and uh, since then, didn't really do too much after that, apart from set up that final goal right there for Amiri. So, good performance all around. What was the Man United score? They beat Burnley 4-0, so it was important we won our game. And Liverpool also won as well by four goals. And again, Stoke. So, all of the, the top three sides won quite convincingly there, which makes it important. Like I said, Man City actually into third now. But the top four is Liverpool, Man City, Man United, and of course, us. With eight games to go, the next game is the North London derby. This will be very, very, very interesting indeed. I'm excited to see this. We could be potentially either five points clear still, or if we get the wrong kind of result here, things could go if Man United win. Very, very tough. Now then, away from home, taking on Spurs at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which in real life is yet to be built. Now, look at the side, though. You can see he definitely values it. Lengle and Van Dijk starting centre-back. Kimmich at right-back. And it's pretty much the same lineup that started other than that in the last game there against Bournemouth. Of course, ultimate difficulty as always. We jump ourselves into this. North London derby. Does everyone that Spurs will want to win? I'm sure it will be this one because they could be the difference between us winning the title and us losing it. So from Spurs' perspective, they would love to get a result today. And here we go then. The two teams are out. The two teams are shaking hands. We're going to see the lineups. I, if I remember rightly, Chesney is in goal for Spurs because we did face off him against him last time. Um, did they have Bellerin as well at right back? Um, I can't remember if it was Spurs or if it was Man United. One of them definitely did though. Um, you're seeing as well, really, really good side already from Spurs and the players that have just shook hands there. We're going to see it in full detail right now, unless it's us first. No, it is the Spurs lineup. So Chesney starts in goal. Back four is Bustos this time. Manolas Sanchez and uh, Ogilvy with Winks and Kessier holding midfield. Front three is Visor, Eriksen and Son. And of course, up front, the very own Harry Kane. We know all about his quality. On the bench though, Bellerin is on that bench. Mbolo as well. Carrasco in there. Some really good quality players. Grosso, Leno starts in goal. Kimmich, Van Dijk, Lengley, and Ben Tavani at left back. 
with the midfield two, El Elneny and Ndidi. And of course, the front three, shot, four nails, Owobi, and leading the line, you guessed it, of course it's us. Right, second off London derby of the season is underway, and this could be one of the more important ones we're going to play. Hey, I'm a poet there. Nice rhyming. Kane, edge of the area, Harry Kane already looking for one. We know the quality he's got from us playing with him at England. He scored a lot of goals for England as well, including some in the World Cup when we went on to win it. So we know the quality he has, and we can't let him get shots away from the edge of the area. I'll have uh, reiterated that to my teammates quite a lot over the last week or so. Harry Winks now for Spurs, getting back to do some defending for my team as well. Just trying to close down, obviously, when I do that. I leave a position, so I've kind of got to go back. Visor now on the ball, looking to try and get the shot away. He gets it away, it's deflected. Bouncing through for Youngmin Son. Kimmich trying to get there. Son going to let it go out for a corner ball, Spurs. This is good pressure from them, but it's not so good for us. We have to clear this ball. Ericsson's corner, put in towards the middle. Up goes big Virgil van Dijk, heading it clear. Davison Sanchez finding Winks, lovely little flick. Now Manalas, back to Kane. These two using the ball effectively. It's a centre-back shot from though from Manalas, and it's easy for Leno. El Nenny looks forward again. Four now, still finding Schopf. Schopf puts the delivery in. We're going to try and challenge for that. Good defensive header away, though. Chesney did come to collect and didn't get anywhere near it. We find Awobi. Awobi still on the ball. Finds his back. It's all about just trying to craft a chance here if we can. Still got hold of it. Quick one, two. Vendidi, maybe. He's through on goal. And did he sends it? Oh, and I just tried to get anything I could to maybe sell Chesney. But he read it. I went with the right foot to try and go near post. Good little ball back from uh, Ndidi. There is the shot. I tried to literally just sell, sell him one. I thought about trying to cut back on the left foot, but... Decided against it because I didn't feel like I had enough time to be able to do that. Trying to sell him short and he read it. We flicked it on from the corner. Bustos heads it away. Bustos who did some good defending duties earlier on. He's now got the chance to put a cross in. It's poor though. It finds Kimmich and Kimmich tries to play us out. Through us down the right hand side. I don't know it really running the channels here but we've got to do it. Send it through. Oh, should have sent it through from the other man. And Didi then gives it away. Ericsson finds Weiser. Big moment for Mitchell Weiser and he couldn't take it. He's dragged his shot wide of the post. Look at the space he's got here as well. Big, big chance for Spurs. Mitchell Weiser has to do better there. We are approaching half-time with Ndidi trying to play a Wobi through. Keep the pressure on though. And Bustos can't go anywhere. Oh my goodness me. There's ever a riskier pass in football. That is it. Oh, I was so close to stealing that back. And it would have been one the last if I had have done. It takes us into half-time. Bustos with a moment of madness right at the end of the half. Could have shot Spurs in the foot, but he gets away with it. And we go into half-time at 0-0, but the game has had chances. Kessier towards Son. Finding Eriksen. Danger now is with Spurs as they go forward. Ogilvy's ball in. Deflected on the way through. Headed clear. Not going to be found with the feet. Why is Awobi always so far up the field of play? You can see shot. He gets back to defend, whereas Awobi seems to consistently be up there. And he's actually a left midfield, not a striker. I'm actually further back than him here. As the ball gets sent through, it should be Leno's. Yeah, look how, look how far up the field of play Awobi plays. It's kind of crazy to see. The ball sent up by Leno. We're going to flick that on towards Awobi. Speak of the devil. He lays it off towards Ben Sabani. Back to Awobi. Awobi send it through. Are we onside though is the question. We've got a chance here. And it's going to be... Oh, put it over. I've blazed it over the bar and we were onside as well. I was hoping Chesney was going to come out. Genuinely was hoping Chesney would come out. Because if he had have done, I'd have made my mind up to try and chip him. That was what I was going to try and do. But he didn't come. And at that point, it was about trying to just find the finish from such a tight angle as well. But that is a good opportunity for us, which I have to do better with in the future. Awobi's now come off and Zivkovic is on. Awobi, of course, just playing as a pass through there to get in. Amiri, good turn. Finds the ball up towards us as well. We've kept hold of it, finding Ndidi. Now Zivkovic, Ndidi again. Amiri, Ndidi, shot. Good football from Arsenal. We can't lose it here, though. Schopf is in. And Alexander Schopf will score. What a finish from the Wideman. Tottenham nil, Arsenal won. 20 minutes left here. And what a finish that is. Tremendous. I thought we'd overplayed it slightly here. But look at this return pass. The first time finish right into the bottom corner. No chance for Wojciech Szczesny. Arsenal find the breakthrough. And it is a brilliant finish. Get in. Realised as well during that, I called him Alexander Shop. He's actually Alessandro. So I apologise before anybody's commenting going, DJ, you got it wrong. I did get it wrong. It's actually Alessandro, so tell a lie. I don't know why I thought it was Alexander. It sounds similar, right? You know, give me a, give me that. Like, yeah. 
Spurs are struggling at the minute to play their way out. And it's really good pressing from Arsenal. Schopf wins it back. That is the problem for Spurs. They've given the ball away. And it's so difficult as we give it away now. The press from Arsenal is working wonders. Good win back from Lengley as well. Harry Kane's not had a lot going for him in this second half. Amiri sends it through to us. Trying to curl one in from the edge of the area. Oh my goodness me. What a finish. Tottenham and Arsenal too. What did I just say about not getting a goal? Well, I tell a lie because we found one right out of the top draw. That should seal the points as well. And since we went one the up, Spurs being in complete control of the ball, have done nothing with it. But then a moment of quality makes it too. You can see the fast fluid move. Amiri just sends it. One touch there to send us out. The second one to finish. Chesney no chance. And that should be the points heading through. But also, more importantly, the goal for us as well. Oh, a good win back. Kimmich sends it in towards my feet as well. Keeps going. Joshua Kimmich. And we've given it back. The full back. Not got a lot of pace though on him. So he tries to set it in early doors. But that should be the end of the game here. And at New White Hart Lane, it is Spurs nil, Arsenal 2. Felt kind of like the first half was one of those games where you're looking at it thinking this is going to be quite the interesting one. But second half, Spurs just didn't show up. And two moments of quality gave us the victory. First, it was Alessandro shot with his shot into the bottom corner. Second, the curler from the Eddie area from Oz. Quality. We get the win, we get a goal, and that moves us forward into the next one. Good result, that, against a very tough outfit in Spurs. Liverpool winning 1-0 against Huddersfield. United still yet to play. City playing against Chelsea, and that hasn't gone ahead yet. We'll see those results in a few moments. But it looks like Dortmund in the quarterfinals is going to be our next game now. I'm actually quite excited for this as well. A little bit of a break away then from Premier League action as we head into game number one of the two-leg header against Borussia Dortmund for the Europa League semi-finals. I'm wondering what their team is going to look like. I see Lacazette on the left-hand side of your screen, which means he's starting against his former club. Will they still have Jadon Sancho? Is he going to play against us? It's all to be found out in a few moments' time. We're going to jump ourselves into game. Arsenal facing Borussia Dortmund. And to be fair, Borussia Dortmund are kind of my German team. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. But obviously, main aim is to get Arsenal the victory, head us through towards, hopefully, the semi-finals of the Europa League. Because you've not won the Europa League as a player. So it'd be great to do it. So interestingly enough, there is no Jadon Sancho in this Borussia Dortmund lineup. Not sure if he's still here. But they do have Lacazette. They do have Forsberg. They do have Draxler. So there's some really quality players here on show today. As Mario Götz is already down on the deck. It's going to be a free kick. I gave away the foul. I'm getting booked inside two minutes for largely not a lot. So that's a bit harsh, Ref. I'm not going to lie. We are underway, though. And uh, as the away leg has come first, we could do an away goal. That's a good tackle, ref. Are you joking me? What way is that a foul? I swear, if you'd have sent me off for that, I'd have been fuming. I'm still fuming anyway, because that's not a free kick. I won the ball. And you're coming out here saying that I fouled him. Outrageous. Drax are going to shoot as well. Goes over the top of the crossbar. Dortmund's first chance. It's come from the referee, giving them a free kick for absolutely naff all. Ref, you're having a nightmare. To be fair as well, I can kind of sense that um, a goal might be coming for Dortmund, because... They're holding on to the play pretty well. If, unless we can get a chance right here. The ball sent through for Alex Awobi. I'm getting held off the ball there, ref. Look at the space I've got in the middle. Awobi, send it. He gets it in. Oh, it's not enough. It's not a good cross. Look at all the space I had in that box. Alex Awobi took way too long to put the cross in. And then when he does, the delivery is atrocious. Then Sabani, El Nenny, still got the ball here, trying to find a chance. And Didi. Towards Awobi's feet. Four nails. Awobi still. Good ball. Ben Sabani. Think the cross in. Why are we taking it onto the weak foot? Comes to shot. Who's shot is blocked. Why are we taking it? Why is our left footed left back trying to cut back on the right foot to put the cross in when he could have just swung it with a left? Decision making not on point there. Corner ball Arsenal though. Before half time. Sent in towards the box. Near post header. Can't keep it down. Great winner from El Nenny. Sets up with a chance to go forward. We find its way through to shot. Struggle half time. We need to get the ball up the field of play. We're running out of time, guys. We haven't got time to be messing about. Like, now the referee's going to blow his whistle. There is a half time whistle. It is nil nil at the break. Dortmund will be much happier with the scenario at this current stage because obviously no away goals are important for them. Speaking of away goals, Chelsea have got one against Braga in their game. So, at the minute, I feel Dortmund are the happier of the two sides, especially given the way that this game's panning out. I mean, I have to be so careful, like I said, to put tackles in because I'm already booked for not a lot. So, I can't risk getting a red card. To Anzebe, great ball through. Giuliano's going to get on that as well. Trying to get it onto the left foot. Ben Sabani cuts inside and wins it back though brilliantly. Four nails up towards us. Wobi needs to make the run alongside his defender. Kind of stayed central a little bit there, Alex Wobi. Does enough to squeeze it back through. Quick one-two with him as well. Go, Wobi. Use your pace. 
Alex Awobi gets the cross in. Four nails with a header. We've seen it so often. And that time it's come off a Dortmund man and gone behind from a corner. But the second half has started off a dream way for Arsenal. Near post again. Attempted. Headed out though from Dortmund. Christian Pulisic has also come on now for Dortmund. Interesting in the change there. Still 15 minutes to go. There is chances in the game. And there's one. And it's wide of the bottom corner. Could have been easily 1-0 Dortmund. Again though, I feel this scoreline, if it stays the same as it is now, after 90 minutes, Dortmund will be the far happier side in the game. Trying to get shot for way down the right-hand side, which we have been able to do. What's he got, though, as a delivery? What quality has he got? Puts it in. Zivkovic is there. Flicks it down to Amiri, who didn't read the play. And Dortmund play their way out of defence and smash it out for a throw-in. That was a good chance, that. So, I just want one opportunity, guys. I just need one. There is the pass through. Come on, boys. Have to finish this off. Still in the box. If you want to use it, goes to the edge of the area. And then he back. What are we doing? We've overplayed it, boys. Oh, for crying out loud. This was a great opportunity. Why did we go back to Elneny instead? I mean, I don't even know what to say. Three minutes from time, it's going to be nil-nil. And Dortmund have got away without conceding an away goal. And there is the full-time whistle. Like I said, Dortmund will be far happier with this result. Thing is, though, they didn't even create anything anyway here. So if they come to our ground, you're expecting them to not really create anything themselves again. Ultimately, the game was without any quality. That was a big problem. Nobody could really step up and make anything happen. I tried to right at the end, and then we overplay it and make a mistake. Sporting CP are 2-0 up in leg one against Napoli. They've got two away goals against the Italians, which is pretty mad to see. The final episode, oh sorry, the final game of today's episode, though, for us, will feature West Bromwich Albion before we have that second leg against Borussia Dortmund. So back to where we need to begin scoring goals in the Premier League. Now, as you can see, not quite fully fit for this one, but I should be okay to continue. Again, we've gone with Oliveira and Enrique at the back. Not sure about those two, but maybe he's resting our two centre-backs for the game against Dortmund, knowing that we have to defend in that one as well, because away goals are going to be dividends for Borussia Dortmund should they get one in that game, because we haven't got one ourselves. So I can kind of understand Emery's decision to rest them. Nevertheless, this is where we need to grab a goal, though. West Brom here at the Emirates then, and let us see exactly how this one's going to play out. We could use a few goals here. I'm not sure what their side looks like. Villa Libre is in it, though. I've just seen him. O'Connor starts in goal, the Youth Academy player. And they've got a back five for them with Kyle Bartley captain in the side. Surprised he's still going. Um, and in terms of the rest of the team, it's not really too much to worry about, to be fair. Two up front, Basogog and uh, Villa Libre. However, the back five, I'm not worried about it. To see Kyle Bartley still in there at this stage, he's got to be decreasing quite heavily. So we should, fingers crossed, get a couple of chances here. And immediately I've played the ball out of play. What a start from myself. Trent Alexander-Arnold, 20 minutes in, and we're yet to really craft a chance. Still got the ball, Alexander-Arnold, and he finds Ndidi. Ndidi to Xhaka. Xhaka. Gets the ball off towards us. Little bit of a change in pace. Curler, and you knew it was coming. Arsenal 1, West Brom 0. Chasing down Salah's record. I need every single goal that we can get at this stage. And that could be a big one. At this stage, done not a lot in the game. I gave the ball away a couple of times as well. It was just about trying to find the opportunity to get a shot away. And it presented itself right here. The run, dummy run made by Xhaka kind of helped us out slightly. But as soon as he gave us it, there was only one thought in my mind. And that was to find the back of the net. Good finish. And is this now going to be floodgates opening against West Brom? Hopefully so. We'll grab a hat-trick here. That is what I need to try and do. Amiri backwards towards Xhaka. Granite Xhaka still finding Ben Sabani. Floodgates have to come open if we are to try and break this record. It finds Ndidi. Ndidi to Xhaka. Xhaka wants more towards Schopf inside. Good shot from Schopf, but it's not quite there. And O'Connor makes the save. Corner ball. Can we go near post and try and score this, though? It's attempted, and we've lost it. Oh, Ben Sabani. What a pass, mate. I uh, said, will the floodgates open? Not quite. And it might even be an opportunity before the end of the half here for West Brom. Good defending, though, by uh, us there. Really poor pass from Ben Sabani. But it's 1-0 at the break, courtesy of that strike that we got early doors. Not a lot happening since then, though. Definitely going to have to find another chance because one goal will not be enough. And we still are behind in terms of a goal-to-game ratio for this Salah record. Um, so we need to try and get at least two here, I'd say. Um, because, like I said, goal-to-game ratio... We need like 1.3 or something. So one a game will not do. Great ball through from Xhaka. Finds us with it as well. Are we into a good position though is the question. We've got the chance to cut it back towards Zendidi. Shot comes in, blocked well. Sends ahead of goalwards. It's easy for O'Connor in the end. 
It was a nice pass through from Xhaka. Couldn't quite get my shot away like I was maybe hoping for. So I had to try and find a teammate, which we did. Just indeed he couldn't catch the strike correctly. Amiri, quick one-two with him. Sends on the right foot. We're into the box. Down in the box we go. Penalty kick, Arsenal. This is the chance for another one for us then. Can have no complaints as well. The defender, you can see, just tumbles in towards us. We will get the opportunity from the spot to give us another one. And there we go, straight into the top left corner. Arsenal 2, West Brom 0. It's a brace for us as well. Come on. If there's ever a penalty, but I need to look at and say, this one's it right here. Usually miss my penalties, but we didn't today. Nice penalty into the top corner. 2 to Arsenal. Wait a minute. There might be a chance for a hat-trick here. Lovely little step over as we're still going through. Trying to get this shot away. Great tackle. I'm, I'm going to be concerned, though, as to how that defender caught up with us because we actually did him first and foremost and then got through, used the pace to break away, and then all of a sudden he was back on me. And then somebody else came across and made a good tackle to stop us scoring. So, yeah, a lot of worrisome signs there about the fact that I thought I was away. It turns out I was nowhere near away because they got back and made it look easy. Not got too long to go now, guys. And it doesn't look like the hat trick's going to come into play. Leno will catch that. Send it, Leno. Quick time. Quick time, Leno. Quick time. I'm asking for it about 14 times here. He took so long to give me the ball. That one back, though. Is there potentially one more chance for us in the game? Line it goes. Oh, it's being away to it. So, I think that's going to be it, guys. We will get the brace. Would have been far better to have got a hat trick, but you can't quite have everything you want. So, West Brom going to get a goal back as well. Poor defending again from Arsenal, who basically make their own mistake. Look at this. Enrique it is. What kind of a tackle is that? Smashed home as well from uh, Basogog. It's going to be too late in the game, though, for West Brom, I believe. I think that's only going to be a consolation. But still, to create your own sort of danger like that, it's appalling from Arsenal. And that is a full-time whistle, then. 2-0 win. The brace... Sorry, 2-1 win, I should say, because they scored just a minute ago. 2-1 win. The brace as well. And we're going to quickly check where that leaves us for today's episode in terms of goals. Spurs 2-1 win against Chelsea. Good result, that, for them. Okay, so in terms of the Premier League, we are now 10 points clear with six games remaining. So remember that. Arsenal-Chelsea is the next game, though. That's going to be very, very tough indeed. So, six games left. How many goals do we actually need to try and get to 33? Which is, of course, the new record should we ever take Salah. Right. Six games left and we need eight goals. Whew. Still need at least, I think, a hat-trick somewhere down the line in the next six games. But today, though, guys, that is going to be the end of today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for your continued support on the channel as well. Really appreciate that. And until next time, guys, if you are new around here, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all again for another video very, very soon. Enjoy your week.